Hi. <laughs> Uh, happy Friday. It is the last day of September, September 30th, 2022. I am Dan Kuntz. We are on the air, barely, but we made it. It's good to see you. It is hazy. It is smoky. It is 57 degrees outside. Good news, Highway 2 is reopened. They did that yesterday afternoon. They closed it on Tuesday in the general area of Skycomish because of the Bulk Creek fire picked up an intensity and it was just not safe to get through that little four or five mile stretch of highway near Skycomish. Yesterday afternoon they decided to reopen it, uh, but uh, there is some uh, reduced speeds in that area, in the general area of Skycomish, but at least you can get over Stevens Pass and make it all the way over to Puget Sound now, which is good news there for those people who prefer to take it. The bad news is we're going to start seeing some pretty lousy air. The Department of Ecology in their uh, smoke forecast weather blog this morning said we're in for some pretty bad stuff. Probably all of next week, starting today, a significant ridge of high pressure is going to start building up. It's going to intensify. It's going to amplify. We're going to have extremely warm temperatures for October. We're talking 15 degrees above normal and uh, no place for the smoke to go. We'll give you those details in just a little bit. Plus the news, we'll have a little bit of sports, just a little bit, maybe a couple minutes. Mariners Magic Numbers won. They won last night. It was a home run, a hitting, back and forth, long, long extra inning game, but they knocked off the Rangers, and uh, they've even moved up a slot in the wild card race. And we'll preview a busy weekend in sports in both high school and college including uh, tonight's game that we'll be televising live from Wildcat Stadium in East Wenatchee. It's homecoming for Eastmont High School, so you alumnus, this is the game you're supposed to go to. You know, if you go to one game a year, it's supposed to be homecoming. They'll crown the uh, Royal Court at halftime, all that good stuff. It is the Wildcats and the Sunnyside Grizzlies. We'll take to the air at 6.30, kickoff at 7 o'clock, and we'll preview everything else uh, sports-wise when we get to sports, and there is a lot of it. And in the back half of the program, uh, the second part of my two-part interview with Dave Erickson. The City of Wenatchee's Director of Parks, Recreation, and Cultural Services. We went to the new community garden that's going in at the intersection of Okanagan and Yakima to talk about that and other stuff that uh, falls on Dave's department. And we'll have that for you in the back half of the program. It is hazy, very hazy, and 57 degrees outside of our studios. Here we go. Well, you're going to see smoke with all of the cameras that we're going to show you to you today. <clears throat> there we go. Again, from our east camera. Wenatchee Heights East, we can see the smoke and the haze right now in Wenatchee. You can smell it. As soon as I got up this morning at 3.30 and I went outside, you just, you get it. You just smell the smoke. It is 70, deg uh, 70 I'm sorry, not 70 degrees. It's 70 on the scale, uh, the, uh, the AQI scale. That means the, the air quality is moderate in Wenatchee. It's not very good at all in Kashmir. And again, as I mentioned before, very smoky conditions are expected uh, really to start in, in earnest tomorrow, and it's going to last all through next week. We're not going to catch a break with the air quality. Camera two. That's up to Cougar Ridge we go. Good morning to the Odebashian Bridge. Hello, uh, Omi Gardens. They're still open for just a few more weeks. If you haven't been up to the gardens, this is a great time of the year to go. Uh, good morning to the Stimmel Complex and uh, the various places there on the old station. And looking up towards uh, monitoring Kashmir, where Kashmir, your AQI is 103. That's unhealthy for sensitive groups. Camera number three. Camera number three takes us to, is that back to Stein again? Yeah, that's Stein. We're looking back towards Dryden and Peshastin and where the fires are. Uh, a little bit of a Lala Canyon there to your right. That's what we're looking at from that camera. And again, as long as those fires will continue to burn, they need a significant weather event. Basically, they need a lot of rain. And there's no rain at all, at all, for the foreseeable future. There's no wind at all in the foreseeable future. Yikes, and camera four. Camera four takes us to, I want to say that's the Waterville camera. It might be Badger. That's Badger Mountain looking, is that pointed directly back towards the valley there, Captain? Wow, that is unbelievable. That's the Badger Mountain, and somewhere down there is the Wenatchee Valley. You can barely make out the tips of the foothills, and boy, we just sucked in there with some pretty lousy air quality. And we'll get to that in just a little bit. The first warm weather ahead, yeah, very, very warm weather. We're talking about highs in the mid-80s here in the Wenatchee Valley. Now, our normal high starting today is 70 degrees. We'll be 10 degrees warmer than that today. We'll be 15 degrees warmer than normal almost all of next week. There is absolutely nothing out there 
that's going to knock this huge ridge that's building up over the region out of alignment. Uh, so you can expect very warm conditions to welcome October. As far as the air quality is concerned, I took this picture about a half an hour ago. And it looks, oh, and we don't have it. I'll just tell you. Cashmere, you're 103 on the, uh, on the scale. That's unhealthy for sensitive groups. Leavenworth is at 67. That's moderate. Wenatchee is at 70. That's moderate. And again, uh, I took a look at the smoke forecast, which is available on the Department of Ecology's website, and they basically said it's going to get worse before it gets better. It's as simple as that. I wouldn't be surprised at all if we have hazardous air by the time we get to Sunday or Monday because we are in for a big, big dome of high pressure and the, the little beyond from the National Weather Service. Now, the forecast is sunny, and you'll see that all the way across, graphically speaking, but how much sun we're actually going to see is dependent on how much smoke we have, and we're going to have a lot of smoke. There you go. 80 degrees, our forecast high today. No wind, no rain, no nothing. Just, there it is. It's pretty basic. 80 to 83 to 83 to 84. Again, our normal high starting today is 70 degrees. That is a very warm trend to start October. By the time we get to Sunday, Monday, and Tuesday, we're going to be buttoning up against some record highs. We could go through, go through a significant stretch of record high temperatures throughout the forecast period. But again, the big story here is going to be the smoke. They are predicting that we are going to be in for some very, very smoky air right through at least Thursday of next week. This high pressure ridge is a monster and it's not going anywhere. Normally we go, hey, it's great, sunshine, warm temperatures, October. Yeah, it's not gonna be so good to breathe the air. It's seven minutes after the hour, a one minute break, and then your headlines on this Friday. You're watching Wake Up in Anchor Valley on the NCW Life Channel. I've been in law enforcement for over 36 years and I've seen a lot of politicians talk about police. But Kim Schreier is different. She listens to us and she delivers. It's Kim who got more money for law enforcement to fund equipment that we need like new bulletproof vests and more funding for mental health resources for an integrated approach to serve our community. We need to increase funding to police and that's exactly what I've done in Congress. Kim has our back and she has my support. I'm Kim Schreier and I approve this message. This could be the view out of your office window. North Central Washington is probably one of the most beautiful places to live and you get the experience at all as a transit operator. Link Transit coach operators enjoy full family benefits, paid CDL training, a state-of-the-art fleet, and the satisfaction of being part of a progressive, community-minded team. We have a lot of fun with each other. I mean, it's a good group of people. We're all kind of like a family. If you like this view, Link has a seat for you. The next operator training starts soon. Apply today at linktransit.com. If it wasn't for the smoke and the haze, we'd have a beautiful sunrise going on right now. But it's smoky and hazy. Yeah, 57 degrees, and we're going to be dealing with some pretty bad air for the next four or five days with sunshine. Just filtered, if you will, nine minutes after the hour. Shalane County prosecutors formally brought charges Wednesday in the shooting that left a 22-year-old man dead in a Kashmir parking lot. Gustavo Urbina Sotelo was fatally shot in downtown Kashmir after allegedly attacking another man with a baseball bat. Jesus Torres Lucatero, who's 24 years old, is now charged with second-degree murder for allegedly firing the shots after Urbina struck his 22-year-old brother, Guillermo Torres Lucatero. Police say Guillermo received minor injuries, and he's now facing charges of first-degree criminal assistance for allegedly driving away from the crime scene. Both men are being held in the Chelan County Jail. It was the fifth fatal shooting in Chelan County this year, including, of course, two incidents in which police used deadly force. A log truck rollover, and then a semi rollover, closed two major roadways in Grant County early Thursday morning, sent the log truck driver to Harborview Medical Center in Seattle. Highway 28 near Afreda was blocked from 3 a.m. to 9.30 a.m. yesterday after the driver, 56-year-old Greg B. Scott of Tenasket, apparently had a medical issue. The truck rolled on its side, spilled the logs onto the roadway. The Washington State Patrol said the man was transported first to Central Washington Hospital 
and then to Seattle. And then at about 5.30 in the morning, a semi rolled on westbound I-90, about 14 miles east of Moses Lake. The state patrol said it appears that driver, 27-year-old Manveer S. Hare of Abbotsford, British Columbia, fell asleep and then overcorrected when the vehicle left the roadway. The semi completely blocked the westbound lanes until they were able to get it out of there at about 11 a.m. yesterday morning. By the way, Hare was not injured. Rescuers were able to reach two stranded climbers Wednesday morning on the Dragon Tail Peak climbing route. That's in the Enchantment Lakes Wilderness area, southwest of Leavenworth. The Volunteer Chelan County Mountain Rescue Association was activated Tuesday night when the climbers reported that they got stuck. The team, with help from the Chelan County Sheriff's Office, managed to reach the climbers Wednesday to guide them to the top of the popular but challenging route. No injuries were reported. That project to remove old mining waste near Saddle Rock has kept the popular Wenatchee Foothills Trail closed since July 18th is expected to be completed and reopened on October 27th. I had a chance to visit with Wenatchee Parks Recreation and Cultural Services Director Dave Erickson, who said the work will mean a better trail too. Yeah, so excited to have this one done. Actually, this project's been underway for 10 years, if you can believe that, from the time that the very first uh, soil analysis was done um, all the way up until this remediation project, which we really appreciate everybody being super patient while the closure's been underway, but the crews are up there with big yellow equipment ta that take up the entire trail width, and they are regrading the entire trail at this point. They're dropping down a, a gravel surface uh, to help with all weather um, opportunities. They're putting in water bars so the water won't run down. You don't get the Grand Canyon running down the center of the trail. Now the water will run off the trail, um, off to the side. So they're getting really close. We're in the final home stretch of it. They'll be up there here soon uh, doing the hydro seeding of the areas that have been disturbed and then coming back in in October as well and planting uh, some additional shrubs, some native shrubs and plants. So getting really close. Looking forward to that uh, reopening on the 27th at noon. And finally, an East Wenatchee lawyer has been appointed to the state board that oversees conduct cases for attorneys throughout our state. John Brangwin will join the Washington State Bar Association's disciplinary board starting tomorrow, October 1st, by appointment of the state Supreme Court. The 14-member board meets six times a year. They review cases where a lawyer might face suspension or disbarment for unethical conduct. Brangman was notified of the appointment earlier this week by Supreme Court Chief Justice Stephen Gonzalez. And that's what's making news. At 13 minutes after the hour, uh, my trick knee tells me we're going to have a very busy news day today. We'll have a newscast for you at 5 o'clock, at 6 o'clock. High school football between the Wildcats and the Grizzlies at 6.30. And then after the game tonight at 10 o'clock, we'll run the news for you one more time with Grant Olson with a preview. Here's Grant Olson. Good morning, Dan. Coming up tonight on the NCW Life Evening News, get ready for a mini fall heat wave beginning today and lasting well into next week. I'll have all the details in your complete North Central Washington weather forecast. And in sports, Eric Granstrom has results from yesterday's high school soccer, volleyball, cross country, and swim and dive action from around the area. And you'll have a look at last night's Mariners Rangers game. That and all the day's news stories coming your way tonight at 5, 6, and 10 on the NCW Life Evening News. We hope to see you then. Dan? Thank you very much, Grant. And don't forget, if you have a news tip, we'd love to hear from you. We've gotten some pretty cool stories because our viewers have said, hey, I think this demands your attention. Get a hold of us. You can email us, news at ncwlife.com. News at ncwlife.com is our email address. Go to our Facebook page and use the Messenger app. Or you can go to our website, ncwlife.com, and get a hold of us that way as well. The Seattle Mariners, their magic number is one to make the playoffs for the first time since 2001. Highlights of a wild night at T-Mobile Park. When we come back, you're watching Wake Up in Anchee Valley on the NCW Live channel. At Washington Trust Bank, can't is a four-letter word. I think I'll sell my veggies at the market. Do you even remember to water the house plants? I do this? You can do this. Hey, we need to build a home office. We We're adding another bathroom. I think I'll study programming. Bro, you even connect your phone to Bluetooth. We believe you can do whatever you set your mind to, and we'll help you get there. Washington Trust Bank, privately owned, locally invested. 
You don't have to be a member to enjoy the view and dine-in style at Highlander Bar and Grill, located in East Wenatchee. Highlander Golf Course has added two state-of-the-art full swing simulators. Food and drink service is available from our full service bar and grill, offering breakfast, lunch, and dinner seven days a week. Indoor and outdoor seating available. Call Shalane, our on-site coordinator, to schedule your special event. Quarter after the hours, the Mariners had a walk-off win in extra innings against Texas last night, and that means their magic number to make the playoffs is one. And boy, were there a lot of home runs last night at T-Mobile Park. As we roll the footage, I will tell you what happened. Mitch Hanniger uh, was hitting two home runs in the early frames last night. That's his eighth and ninth of the season. And then uh, Jared Kelnick, he added two home runs of his own. That's his sixth and seventh of the year. But the Rangers, they also hit four home runs. The seesaw battle would go to extra innings. Each team scored a run in the 10th. Texas took a 9-8 lead into the ninth inning. And then Seattle's Louis Torrens and J.P. Crawford came through. Here we go to extra innings. the fastball in the middle of the plate. Let it travel, get deep into the strike zone and a solid line drive base hit to tie this ball game up. A little more making the right decision not to try to go to third on Garcia. Andrew Scott Service said that's not exactly the way he planned to win, but he loves the fight that his team has. We're getting closer. What a ball game. Uh, a little bit of everything, all kinds of hitting, all kinds of home runs. Um, you know, it's about as wild. And that, those games happen at the end of the year. It's just crazy teams back and forth. And, uh, you know, the, the Rangers swung about really well tonight. But uh, our guys uh, answered the call. You know, that uh, two home runs by Haney. Um, great night by Jared Kelnick. Um, Gino continues to get big hits. I thought Dylan Moore played a great game. We ran the bases well. We did a lot of good things um, tonight. Uh, uncharacteristically, you know, our, our bullpen gave up some runs tonight, and, and that hasn't been the case. Those guys have been so steady for us all year long. Uh, but it happens, and that's what good teams do. You pick each other up. Yeah, you pick each other up, and now Seattle turns right around. They got Oakland for the first of three games tonight. First pitch, 640 on Root Sports Northwest. Elsewhere, the Mariners moved a half game ahead of the Rays for the second wild card spot because the Rays lost to Cleveland 2-1. to one. Baltimore dropped to five games back after a 5-3 loss to Boston. Toronto was idle, but they clinched a playoff spot because, well, the other teams lost. So there you go. Break out your tiaras and polish up your convertibles. It's homecoming time in East Wenatchee. Eastmont hosts Sunnyside tonight at Wildcat Stadium. It is homecoming. We'll have live coverage with Eric Granstrom and Paul Collard. Pre-game show at 6.30. Michael Don, the head coach of the Wildcats, says his club's been able to compartmentalize homecoming festivities so they can focus on football. Um, you know what? Our kids have been pretty dialed in this week. I thought last year um, we got hit with the homecoming bug, which, you know, it's tough. It's hard. A lot of things going on, school, um, social aspect. You know, kids are kind of all over the place. But um, we talked about it. That was our main emphasis from Monday with our guys was, hey, you know, we got to be dialed in this week. We got to be where we are. Um, I'm not asking you to be football all day, all the time. When you're at homecoming, you're at homecoming, you're in class, you're in class. But 
when you're here from three to five, third, three thirty to five thirty, um, we are uh, we are football players. Sunnyside's coming off a forty-one to twenty win over West Valley last Friday, while Eastmont evens its records uh, by two big victories in a row. Now, during the last two weeks, the Wildcats have reeled off one big scoring play after another, and needless to say, Coach Don says he hopes that trend continues. We're hoping we can, can maintain getting explosive. I don't know if we'll, you know, it's it's hard to maintain how explosive we've been the last few yeah. games. Um, you know, we're averaging an astronomical amount per play. Um, we haven't run a lot of plays in the last few games. I think between the two, um, we counted it up, and I think our varsity has run like 53 offensive plays in two weeks. So that's not a lot. Um, Sunnyside ran 80 in their last game. Um, so, you know, we don't think it's going to be that kind of game, but we do think we, you know, we got some explosive potential. We're getting some things figured out up front, um, and we're hoping we can get some explosive plays on them, uh, especially in the passing game, and then uh, you know, grind it out as much as we can too. Elsewhere in the Columbia Basin Big Nine, the Panthers are on the road. They'll take on Moses Lake, the defending league champions. Coach Scott Devereaux says the Mavericks might be without starting quarterback Brock Clark. Same thing we've been seeing since last season, you know, they're going to spread it out, uh, throw it around the yard a little bit. Um, their quarterback got injured late in the game last week, and they put in probably the fastest athlete in a big nine or pretty close to it in a quarterback. So, you know, we looked at uh, working on containment of him, and, and he's really good. He's really fast. He plays corner, plays receiver. And uh, defensively, they're pretty much an odd front team. and. Um, they've given up some yards this year, probably more than they want to. But with the speed they have, they seem to always kind of make up for it. They're, they're really fast. Devereaux says he and his staff have been working with their players this week and not getting caught up in the movement, especially when a call doesn't go their way. Yeah, and we know when we go on the road, it's tougher. You know, Moses Lake is kind of notorious for having a home field advantage. And uh, so we're, we're prepared for that. We talked about it Monday, and I remind them this week, don't be surprised if we rip off a big play and it comes back. You know, let's focus on what's important now is the next play. And uh, if I can keep my composure, I think that helps uh, the players keep theirs. So the Big Nine schedule, you got one H.M. Moses Lake kicking off at 7. Uh, Davis will play at Eisenhower. Davis is the visiting team, even though they both play in the same stadium. And West Valley travels to Hermiston. Caribou Trail League play tonight. Quincy will visit Cascade in Peshaston along the river. Cashmere has another non-league game. They'll be in Afraid to take on the Tigers. And the Goats are on the road at OMAC. In B-League football, they kick off at 3 this afternoon. That's when Antiat visits Yakima Tribal. Okanagan will host Oroville at 4. The 7 o'clock games feature Manson at Tenasket. Waterville Mansfield hosting Soap Lake and Lake Roosevelt is at Brewster. To the Les Schwab Prep Girls Soccer Scoreboard from last night, Cascade blanked Quincy. 5-0. Cashmere got by OMAC 3-1. Ellensburg stopped afraid of 3-1. Liberty Bell beat Oroville 10-1. And Brewster over Manson 6-1. The soccer schedule for tomorrow. OMAC will host Manson at 11 a.m. Afraid of will visit Grandview at noon. Tenasca takes on Mount Vernon Christian. The 1 o'clock games have Moses Lake at Wenatchee, East Moss at West Valley, and Brewster travels to Davenport. And we will be at Lee Boftel Field at the Apple Bowl tomorrow for soccer between the Mavericks and the Panthers live right here. Sebastian Moraga with the play-by-play. -play. One o'clock is when they'll start going tomorrow on television, or as we like to say in the business, TV. In prep volleyball last night, Eastmont gave West Valley a run for its money, but they lost in the end. 25-18, 13-27-25, 27-25, and 25-21. Wenatchee swept three games for Moses Lake. Afraid of remains unbeaten with a 25-14, 15, and 16 division uh, decision over Grandview. A couple of close matches in the CTL last night. Cascade edged Quincy 3-2. OMAC topped Cashmere 3-2 in B-League play. Manson beat Brewster 3-1. Okanagan, Antioch, Waterville, Mansfield, and Lake Roosevelt. Winners all in straight sets. Volleyball schedule tomorrow. Waterville, Mansfield host Easton at 11 o'clock. East Valley will visit Cascade at 11.30. Antioch will be in Soap Lake. Orville has a noon match at Curlew. Liberty Bell will host Bridgeport at 12.30. Manson travels to Tenasket at 6.30. East Mount Moses Lake came out of the pool winners yesterday in Yakima. The Wildcats topped West Valley 123-39 and Sunnyside 138-16. And the Mavericks beat Eisenhower 131-48 and Davis 133 to 40. Big nine swimmers and divers will gather at Wenatchee's pool for a big meet today that starts at noon.
cross country. Local teams will compete tomorrow at some sizable cross country meets. Eastmont will be at the Sunfair Invite at 9 a.m. Wenatchee will be at the Curtis Invitational. And Afreda will be part of the battle for the 509 in Cheney at 10 a.m. The Wenatchee Wild continue early season play in the BCHL hockey. They're still in Canada. They'll play at West Kelowna tonight at 7, then at Salmon Arm tomorrow at 6. You can follow the action locally on KPQ or 1340 The Hawk. College football. Huskies play tonight. Don't forget about that. The 15th ranked Washington Huskies will be in Pasadena to take on UCLA 730 on ESPN. The Cougars have another home game at Martin Stadium tomorrow. Uh, you can watch that on the Pac-12 Network. 2.30 kickoff against Cal. Central Washington is on the road after a bye last week. They'll be at Eastern New Mexico at 5 o'clock tomorrow afternoon. And Eastern Washington's game at Florida has been moved to Sunday because of Hurricane Ian. Kickoff is on ESPN Plus at 9 a.m. on Sunday morning. Seahawks will be in Ford Field in Detroit. We'll take on the Lions on Sunday. Kickoff is at 10 a.m. Both teams are 1-2. and two. You can watch the action on Fox. And then after that, you can watch Arizona at Carolina. Sunday at 105, the Rams and the 49ers have a date on Monday Night Football on ESPN, Monday at 515. And those are just some of the games that people are playing on this Friday, the last day of September. I need a cup of coffee. Happy National Chewing Gum Day today for you fans of chewing gum. I used to chew a lot of gum when I was young. I don't really do much anymore. Big fan of uh, bubble gum because you can make those ginormous Bubbles. Why September 30th? Because William Wrigley, the chewing gum magnet, was born on September 30th, 1861. He started the Wrigley Chewing Gum Company in Chicago with all the money in the world that he had. In 1891, he started his chewing gum company with 32 bucks. When he died in 1932, he was worth $32 million. So yeah, Bill Wrigley did okay for himself. Humans have been chewing some sort of gum type object for over 5,000 years. Most of it to stave off hunger. You would chew something and it would create saliva and then you would, wouldn't be so hungry. Uh, studies have shown that chewing gum regularly improves your memory, it reduces stress, it increases your alertness, and if you chew sugar-free gum, you're improving your oral hygiene. It also helps curb your cravings and it improves your digestive system. Happy National Chewing Gum Day today. It is 28 minutes after the hour. Today in history, the Bambino, Babe Ruth, breaks his own record on the last day of the baseball season, September 30th, 1927. Babe Ruth becomes the first ever baseball player to hit 60 home runs in a season. Many people thought that would never, ever be broken. It held for 24 years until Roger Maris hit 61. In 61, Roger Maris' record lasted for 37 years until Mark McGuire hit 70 home runs in 1998. Mark McGuire's record lasted for just three years until Barry Bonds hit 73 in 2001. And who knows how many home runs Aaron Judge will end up with uh, by the time this season comes to an end next Wednesday, October 5th. Happy 87th birthday to the Hoover Dam. It's been in the news a lot. Not the dam, but the, the reservoir behind it, which is as low as anybody can ever remember it ever being. It was dedicated on this date. It's pretty impressive. I've seen it a few times. Uh, Hoover Dam has enough concrete to stretch all the way across this country. That's so how much concrete they used. It was dedicated as Hoover Dam, even though Herbert Hoover really had nothing to do with it. In fact, he wasn't even at the ceremonies. The President of the United States, FDR, dedicated Hoover Dam on this day in 1935, never even once mentioned Herbert Hoover. And then the Hoover administration, then the Roosevelt administration changed the name from Hoover Dam to Boulder Dam. And then in 1947, they switched it back to Hoover Dam for reasons uh, I don't know. When Lake Mead is full, and it ain't, it's the largest reservoir in the United States. But as you know by now, if you look at that picture, that's a recent picture. They were seeing things in Lake Mead and the Colorado River that they haven't seen since they built the dam. 87 years ago. September 30th, 1947, an incredibly significant World Series gets underway as we roll the footage, and I will tell you why the 1947 series was so important. This was game one on September 30th, 1947 at Yankee Stadium in uh, the Bronx in New York City. The Yankees 
and the Dodgers. The 1947 World Series, the first World Series ever to be televised. Ooh, that's a big old plane right there. Needless to say, Babe Ruth showed up. There's the Babe. That was his last ever World Series he would see. He would die before the 1948 World Series. Yeah, the first World Series ever to be televised. Of course, it was the first World Series ever to have an African-American player with Jackie Robinson. It was the first World Series to exceed $2 million in gate receipts. It was the very first World Series that saw a pinch hit home run. Yogi Berra did that in Game 3. It was the first World Series that had six umpires on the field, the four umpires on the infield and two umpires down the uh, left field and right field line that had never been done. And this was the first and to date only World Series, and this is an amazing statistic, the first and only World Series in which the Yankees won Game 7 at Yankee Stadium. Think about that. The Yankees have won all of those World Champions, but of all the World Series that went to Game 7s that the Yankees won, they only won one World Series with a Game 7 in Yankee Stadium. The 47 World Series got underway 75 years ago today. Happy 54th birthday to the Boeing 747, the biggin. The Boeing 747, there's the front page of the Seattle Times. On September 30th, 1968, the Boeing 747 is rolled out to the public in Everett, Washington, so they could see it for the very first time, and everybody went, that's a big airplane. Boeing manufactured 1,570. Boeing 747s, they have to deliver <clears throat> the final four 747s. They're doing it this year. By the end of the year, they have to deliver the final four that was on order from Atlas Air. And once they deliver those four airplanes between now and the end of the year, that will be the end of the 747. It's just not economically feasible anymore. Who's kidding who? It eats a lot of gasoline. Happy birthday to the Boeing 747. And last year, yesterday at this time, we talked about the last game that the Giants ever played at the Polo Grounds after the final out. The fans stormed the field and stole home plate and stole telephones and the pitching rubber and the bases and just did generally vandalized the Polo Grounds. Well, it also happened one day later and in 1971. They already had told everybody the Washington Senators would be moving to Arlington, Texas to become the Texas Rangers beginning in 1972. So the very last Washington Senators game at RFK Stadium, and they didn't even make it to the end. With two outs in the bottom of the ninth inning, the fans stormed the field. And they did pretty much what they did at the Polo Grounds in 1957. They carted off as many souvenirs as they could possibly get a hold of. And as it turns out, they tore the field up so bad that they simply stopped the game, and the Senators had to forfeit to the Yankees, even though they were ahead. They were ahead seven to five with two outs in the bottom of the ninth. They had to forfeit because the fans tore the field to pieces. Shame on you. Birthdays, just one. The third biggest selling singer of the 20th century. Number one is Elvis Presley. Number two is Frank Sinatra. And number three, Johnny Mathis. Has had 73 albums chart on the Billboard album charts. That's remarkable. He sold over 400 million records worldwide. He was also a top flight athlete in San Francisco. He, was, he considered a career in professional athletics. He's still a great golfer. He's had nine holes in one. He has a single digit handicap and he's 87 years old. Not bad. Happy birthday, Johnny Mathis. Chances are. Ow, I just hurt myself. 34 minutes after the hour, going to take a break. Got an opinion from Mike Mad Dog McNaughty and part two of my uh, catching up with Dave Erickson, the director of Parks, Recreation, and Cultural Services for the City of Wenatchee. Lots of good information coming your way for you folks who like to use the parks and recreate. Dave will join me when we come back. You're watching Wake Up Wenatchee Valley on the NCW Life Channel. Badger Mountain Brewery is your cure for boredom. Jam Night Mondays. Trivia Wednesdays. Live Music Fridays. And Sunday Brunch. There's always something brewing at Badger Mountain. So come join the party. 
bring the whole family up to Stormy Mountain Brewing and local public house in historic downtown Chelan. Applewood smoked brisket, street style tacos, and our award-winning barbecue rubs and sauces. Our meals pair perfectly with our exciting lineup of craft ales, made right here in Chelan. We've got room for big groups, or give us a call for catering. So grab the kids and check out the fun at Stormy Mountain Brewing and local public house located in the heart of Chelan. Introducing Alpine Airman. Because every home needs a superhero to eliminate poor indoor air quality, send inefficient operating equipment packing, and cut high energy bills down to size. For heating or cooling and equipment replacement, turn to the experts and the superheroes at Carrier and Alpine Air. We offer the best deals on high efficiency Carrier products, along with friendly, knowledgeable service and incredible savings to fit your budget. Get a little oompa back in your life by visiting the 24th annual Leavenworth Oktoberfest at the Town Toyota Center in Wenatchee. Your thirst will be satisfied with a variety of authentic German beer, and your hunger will be filled with German brats right off the grill. The sounds of oompa will be delivered up in two venues with live nonstop entertainment. Don't miss out. For more information or to purchase tickets, log on to LeavenworthOktoberfest.com. If you are looking for dependable car service and repair, visit the good guys at Quick Lube and Tune. They've been keeping cars and trucks in the Wenatchee Valley running smooth for 35 years. Quick Lube and Tune is your hometown shop for a 10-minute oil change, complete tune-ups, alignments, brakes, mufflers, air conditioning service, and more. Get more life out of your vehicle by bringing it to the local guys you can trust at Quick Lube and Tune on South Wenatchee Avenue. Hi, uh, I'm Chuck Dronin, Managing Member at Epla Dolan Retirement and Assisted Living. It's been a tough year for all of us, but especially for those working and living in senior care facilities. Over the course of these many difficult months, our staff at Epla Dolan has been vigilant in adhering to federal and state guidelines to protect and assure the safety of our residents and their caregivers. If you're in need of assisted living for a loved one, give us a call at Epla Dolan. We're here for you. Coming home should never be a chore. Let Merry Maids of Wenatchee customize all your cleaning needs. Weekly, bi-weekly, special occasion. Do you have a vacation home that needs cleaning? We clean them too. Locally owned and operated, let Merry Maids do the cleaning while you focus on your family and friends. Merry Maids has special offers to fit your budget. Request your free cleaning estimate today, 509-663-1710. Josh is a small business owner in Chelan County. This Josh just switched to long-lasting LED bulbs. That Josh still uses conventional light bulbs. This Josh spends more time with his customers and growing his business, knowing his LEDs will last for years. That Josh is replacing his conventional light bulbs again and again. Install new lighting in your local business. Chelan County PUD can pay up to 100% of the cost of your new lights that save energy. And everybody is entitled to my opinion. Now, advertisers, let me tell you this. If you start your radio ad with some fast-talking auction-type guy giving the required legal disclaimer at the beginning of the ad instead of at the end, what I hear is, is we got something to hide. Yeah, you know what I'm talking about. A radio ad that starts with, use of this product may cause a dirty heartburn or arthritis and suddenly death, and that goes on the slower voice that tells you how great their product is. Now, I ain't buying it. No how, no way. If you start your ad with some fast-talking guy with the legal disclaimer at the beginning, I don't think so. This is Mike Mad Dog Magnati, and that's my opinion. At DA Davidson in Wenatchee, they believe your investment success begins with a personalized plan. A plan that is the roadmap you need to navigate your way to living your best years in retirement. DA Davidson can help you create a plan so you can take the time to enjoy the finer things in life. Let the financial advisors at DA Davidson help chart your retirement future today.
At Washington Trust Bank, can't is a four-letter word. I think we should hire more people. Doc, late for a meeting. Hey, we need to build a home office. We We're adding another bathroom. We need a warehouse. I can't imagine how we do that. We believe you can do whatever you set your mind to, and we'll help you get there. Washington Trust Bank. Privately owned. Locally invested. We were in Roseburg in the early 80s. Our oldest son, Dan, was a defensive back, a starter on that team. They set, in fact, became Oregon State champions, setting the first undefeated 14-0 season in Oregon's history. And a lot of people were losing jobs. Friends had left the community. It was a hard time. That football team and companies like Abby's kept that place alive and the community spirit alive. That's legendary. Monday, Monday, Mondays are a happy hour all day long at Bob's Burgers and Brew in East Wenatchee. Great deals on appetizers, martinis, specialty drinks, wine, well drinks, and draft beers. Bob's Burgers and Brew in East Wenatchee. Come on in. They look forward to serving you. The NCW Life Channel offers marketing packages that help you build your brand and sell your products and services. From traditional TV ads to targeted digital campaigns, let us help you build your customer base. Call NCW Life Channel today. Did you know that nearly 50% of pet poisoning cases involve human medications and prescription drugs? Sometimes the culprit's a curious dog, but cats get into their share of trouble as well. Other times, pet owners mistakenly give their pets their own medications that are safe to people but toxic to their pets. Dr. Shauna Bayes and her staff care about your pets. Go to pawsandclawsvh.com for a complete list of medications to avoid or call 888-PAWS. Hi, I'm Jim Heinlein, independent agent and owner at Springwater Insurance Group here in North Central Washington. And it's that time of year again, October 15th to December 7th, that is the time if you have a Medicare plan, do I wanna keep it or do I wanna change it? For any of those questions, give us a call at Springwater Insurance Group because we're independent agents. We don't work with one company, we work with many companies because all of you have different situations and needs. So if you have questions about 2021 Medicare plans, give us a call, 888-2600. Welcome back to Wake Up in Anchee Valley. Once again, uh, our continuing conversation with Dave Erickson, the Director of Parks, Recreation, and Cultural Services for the City of Wenatchee, and the man who declined to run for a third term for Kashmir City Council solely to write his best-selling book, Why I Decided Not to Run for a Third Term for the Kashmir City Council. Dave Erickson, it's good to see you, my friend. You too. Thanks, Dan. We're here at the Okanagan Community Garden. A brief little history of this rather unique plot of land pretty close to downtown Wenatchee. It was a city lot. A number of years ago, the city sold it to a private concern under the auspices that if the private concern didn't do anything to the property for a certain amount of time, the city reserved the right to buy it back for the cost that they paid for it. And that's exactly what happened. Mm -hmm. The city retook ownership of this property late winter, early spring. Oh, about like 2015 or 20, so. I'm sorry. Yes. And then it, it was, was like, probably yeah, way early. But spring. nothing really happened until, no. hey, we got this funky lot mm -hmm. uh, right in the middle of the Grandview Historic District. What do we do with it? And start me, start me from there. Yeah, so we uh, sent out mailings to the entire neighborhood, everybody around, and went through a park design process over a period of about nine months in 2017, said, hey, what would you guys like to see in this property? And came up with six different concepts, and out of those concepts, a community garden kind of floated to the top. And here we are just a sh few short five years later, have the funding in place to actually start getting this thing built. So uh, we're in the process of, of finishing up phase one, uh, which is putting in the outside landscaping and getting all the utilities in. You can see the fences starting to go up. And then next year coming back in with phase two, which would build the approximately 40 raised garden beds, put water to all of those beds, put in the walkways, um, and then also the uh, shed and a few other amenities, so. It's a unique lot, so you really had some your hands were kind of tied of what you could do with it, right? Very challenging site, yeah. So not only do we have setbacks all the way around uh, on a triangle-shaped piece, so it really narrows down what you can do, but once you start scratching the surface down here, it was solid bedrock almost everywhere. So we had a really difficult time even getting irrigation in the ground. So it's a good thing we're doing raised beds because we can't really go down below. A lot of uh, big boulders. You found huge boulders yes. the size of cars down there that you probably didn't know were there. Yeah, absolutely. No, they were huge. The, the end of the property 
under the sidewalks all the way out, completely full of rock. Did that, did that uh, mess up with the timeline at all, or are you just kind of just, we got to get rid of them one way or the other? Yeah, no, it actually worked out just fine. Um, we were planning on doing this project late summer, early, early fall, and, and here we are, and we're, we're pretty close to being done with this phase. And you're doing this kind of backwards. We are. Yeah, yeah, explain that. Yeah, normally, so what we would do is we build it from the inside out, but because of the way some of the elements came together, we're having to do it outside in. So we have the utilities into the park or into the property, um, at this point, we're doing the fence and all the street trees and, and the sod you can see is out there. Uh, but now we'll come back in next spring and that's when we'll do the raised beds and everything else. And you have people who are already, you have a waiting list for people who want to use this community garden once it's up and running. We do, yeah. So it'll be a reservation base, just like we have with our other community garden uh, program. And people are super excited and interested about doing this. So hopefully we'll have more space so gardeners can get out and, and really enjoy and grow some locally owned produce. Will there be a garden season here in 2023? Is the timeline maybe maybe some late season vegetables, like maybe some pumpkins and some corn, stuff like that? Yeah, maybe late season. Uh, we don't know for sure yet. It'll just kind of depend on how long it takes us to do the insides. And it's good to see what would otherwise be an unattractive eyesore close to the heart of downtown to have something done with it. Yeah, you know, with the amount of people moving into the community or, or going into apartment living, and the amount of new apartments that are coming into just the downtown area, this should really be a, a great opportunity for those folks to actually get out and, and be able to grow some food. A couple of years ago, when we visited with Dave up at Washington Park, historic Washington Park, the big old trees right along uh, Washington Street uh, were heaving up the sidewalks. They were either dead or dying. They all had to be removed. They were all removed. You have since made those improvements. You planted the correct kind of trees. All those important things uh, at Washington Park. Give me an update there. Yes, yeah, so we replanted the trees. Um, and then this year we went, we're starting the process to replace all the sidewalks around the park too, but they're in really rough shape. So this spring we replaced the sidewalk all along Washington Street. A uh, little bit here in a couple of weeks, we're gonna start the process of adding a sidewalk on the south side of the park. So you'll be able to walk a loop around the park if you're there watching your kids for soccer or whatever they're doing. You can walk a loop and get your fitness in then too. So that work's gonna start here pretty soon. You'll see that happening on the restroom side of the park. When these projects come up, like the community garden here in the Washington Park, how do you fi find out with you and your brethren with the city where Parks and Rec picks it up and and uh, M&O doesn't. Uh, where, where, how, do, how do your roles collide in that regard when yes. it comes to maintenance and operations as a public works as opposed to mm -hmm. parks and rec? So a lot of times it, it depends on the skill set of our employees as well as the size of the project. So if it's a smaller project, this is kind of the extent of our smaller projects, um, then our guys can do it. We try to do that because it typically saves money. If it's a little bit bigger project, then we're going to have to contract that out. Um, to a larger company, like we're doing down at Lincoln Park, for example, with KRCI or, or Hearst Construction at a couple of our other projects. Uh, just because summer is over and the pool is closed doesn't mean that uh, your programs grind to a halt. you got a lot of things coming up this autumn, a lot, of, a lot of club programs that are all sponsored by the city. Super cheap for city residents to get involved in for the kids and whatnot. Yeah, youth basketball. So third, fourth, fifth grade boys. Um, that's coming up. Registration deadline's October 12th. Uh, you don't want to miss out on that. And then uh, the draft is the following week and games will go all the way up through mid-December. We've got a uh, drop-in adult co-ed volleyball. Um, so that's going to be a, at Foothills Middle School coming up in October as well, mid-October. And then, of course, the one that you can't forget is ha the Halloween Carnival. And that's down there on Wenatchee Avenue, of course, on Halloween uh, from th at 3 o'clock. So. And you are moving your offices. Your office is where all the equipment is on McKittrick Street, where they have the snow plows. And yep big rigs that move around, uh, but you're going to be moving to the new and improved City Hall. Yes, we are. Um, so we're going to be moving our offices in pieces uh, because we do have programs and events happening. So we'll be moving down to City Hall uh, and our office will be open for us anyway, November 1st. And then City Hall is doing a big ribbon cutting on November 17th, right out in front of City Hall. Um, you can come down and, and watch that too. And a friendly reminder for the people of the city of Wenatchee and all of North Central Washington for that matter, this is, these are your parks. Uh, the, you know, the recreation programs that Dave talked about, volleyball and basketball, they just don't do that to keep Dave busy in the wintertime. <laughs> it's for you folks to, to go out and enjoy and pertain in, in living here in the Wenatchee Valley and in the city of Wenatchee. This is why, you, this is why the, the, your parks department exists to begin with. Exactly, yeah. You know, what, what we do is every six years we adopt a comprehensive plan, and that plan is based on the input that we receive from the city and from the residents. 
and we're actually going to be updating that plan next year for the next six year period and that outlines the projects and the parks and the different programs and things that we do for that time period so uh, it's really important to get involved so that way then we can continue doing things like this. And knowing you, you're probably already working on the next six year plan <laughs> as we speak as you make your rounds around town. We do have a file started on things that come up during the time. So. I bet you do. Mm -hmm. Dave Erickson, the Director of Parks, Recreation and Cultural Services for the City of Wenatchee with our, what, twice a year checkup, mm -hmm. spring and fall. And it's always good to see you, Dave. And uh, next time you need me, you know where to find me. I do. You right do. across the street. That's right. Yeah, you're <laughs> right. You will be right across the street. Mm -hmm. I'll come over and bug you. Perfect. You're watching Wake Up in Anchi Valley, and we'll be right back. Campfire North Central Washington, serving youth ages 3 to 18. Register today in one of Campfire's programs. Club members meet regularly with volunteer leaders to learn responsibility, sharing, cooperation, and citizenship. When a child is involved in campfire, they will be actively learning and engaged in activities, encouraged to learn new skills, feel a part of the group, learn to work in a team setting, participate in planning, goal setting, and making lasting memories. When Mike leaves town, it's a little scary. You never know who might be outside. But we feel safer inside knowing our home is being monitored by a local company. I can check our alarm from just about anywhere. So when we get home, I know it's safe. Protect your family and save money with a local company. Switch your current security monitoring to Guardian Services from Localtel. Call Guardian Security from Localtel now or visit localtel.net to learn more. With all the variety on SureStream TV from Localtel, there's always something to watch. But what if you hit the couch in the middle of all the shows? That's a perfect time to use the features Catch Up or Restart. Catch up on shows from up to three days ago or restart your show from the beginning. Go to your guide and select the show to restart. Then play, pause, rewind on your schedule. Don't forget, SureStream TV from Localtel lets you decide when shows begin. Come on, I'm a certified technician. I was trained to take good care of you. Nine, I've only been to the dealer. I've been coming here for years. These guys are great. Look around. The BMW, the Jag, the Volvo, they're all waiting for regular service. Well, the BMW has a little computer issue, but that's nothing we can't handle. Come on in. From regular maintenance to computer troubleshooting, trust the Global Car Care technicians with your import, diesel-powered, or domestic vehicle. Global Car Care, they speak your car's language. Danke schön. The Wenatchee Valley. Here, most of us really enjoy the great outdoors, and most of us try to make the most of our natural resources. Here at Apple Valley Honda, we know that for generations, we have harnessed nature to sustainably power the West, and we are proud to be part of that tradition as an environmentally green dealership award winner. Being a green dealership means Apple Valley Honda has reduced our overall environmental impact. We are so proud to live in this wonderful community. It's Apple Harvest Day at the Cashmere Museum this Saturday, October 1st, starting at 9 a.m. And yeah, it's fun for the whole family. Try your hand at gold panning, enjoy a pony ride, face painting, live music, food, and so much more. It's Apple Harvest Day, Saturday, October 1st from 9 to 4. And be sure to thank these fine sponsors. Weeds Cafe, stop in for breakfast, lunch, and lattes. Get coverage you can trust from Bruce Cheadle, your State Farm agent. Welcome to Bubbly by Cake Chick, where friends come to relax and reconnect. Enjoy delicious lunches, decadent desserts, classic champagne, and bourbon tastings. Make every day an occasion when you join friends at Bubbly by Cake Chick on Riverside Drive in Wenatchee. And we are back. It is hazy. It is smoky. It is 55 degrees here in the Wenatchee Valley. That's a live shot from our camera high atop Stein Hill pointed towards Dryden and Peshaston. And it's pretty dirty air right now in that area. 111 on the AQI scale. That is unhealthy for sensitive groups. That's right now in Kashmir. Leavenworth, believe it or not, which is normally pretty bad, is at 68. That's moderate. Still could be better. Uh, here in the Wenatchee Valley, we're at 69, also moderate, and up north in, in Chelan, you're also 
at 69 on the AQI scale. Now, we do have warm weather ahead. <clears throat> Everything's going to be relative. We're talking about temperatures nearing 15 degrees above normal. Starting today, September 30th, our normal high temperature goes from 71 to 70, and eventually it'll be in the upper 60s by the middle part of next week as we welcome October. We're going to be well above normal right through at least Thursday, maybe even Friday. National Weather Service says it's one of the biggest ridges that they've seen at this time of the year in a long, long time. The temperature is well above average for everybody in our viewing area, but the story really is going to be the smoke. The, uh, the Department of Ecology is predicting much worse air quality to return, really starting tomorrow. It's going to start today, but it's really going to get bad tomorrow, and it's going to last all through the forecast period. They have created a, a, a map of the state of Washington to show you where the bad air is going to be, and we'll start out with Saturday. <clears throat> and if it's red, that means it's unhealthy, and they're expecting it to go between unhealthy for sensitive groups to just plain unhealthy in the area that you see on your screen, and that, by golly, is the Wenatchee Valley. Wouldn't you know it? That's your air quality forecast for Saturday, tomorrow. For Sunday, pretty much the same. Little bit cleaner air in some locations, but we're going to get socked in here in the Wenatchee Valley, in the upper valley, with bad air on Sunday. Then you move it to Monday. Same deal. Lots and lots of smoke and haze right down on the valley floor. And right on into Tuesday, it looks a lot like Monday. Again, this is what we're going to be looking at. Now, this forecast only goes through Tuesday of next week. But they say, unless we have a significant weather event, and we don't have any. There's no rain. There's no wind. This is a big dome of high pressure. It's going to amplify. It's going to intensify. It's going to put the lid on the region. The fires above Lake Wenatchee are going to continue to smolder away until they get significant rain. And until that happens, we're in for a very long period Really starting tomorrow. It's not going to be too good today either. We're off to a pretty bad start with Cashmere at 111. But it looks like starting tomorrow, we are going to hover anywhere between unhealthy for sensitive groups to just plain unhealthy for the Wenatchee Valley all the way through, probably this time next week at least. There's nothing out there to bring us any kind of break from the lousy weather. So, sorry folks, the, the weather's gonna be great, but we're gonna deal with the smoke and the haze, and it's not going anywhere for the foreseeable future. Sunshine today in 80, again, is you gotta take it with a grain of salt. It's gonna be filtered sunshine, because we're gonna have hazy conditions all day today. Yesterday's high was 76 exactly as we predicted, so we're gonna be warmer than that today, with a high of right around 80, 52 for the overnight low tonight. A little bit warmer still with a lot of dirty air on Saturday. And a high of 83. 54 for the overnight low tonight. Sunny and hazy on Sunday. 83, then to 84. By the way, those high temperatures Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, pretty close, if not above, record-breaking high temperatures. It's been a long time since we've seen this kind of weather pattern in October. This happened a couple of years ago. In October of 2020, we had a long stretch of sunny and warm weather to start out the month of October. It didn't last very long, but this is in, we're in for a very long period of sunny, unseasonably warm weather, possibly record-breaking high temperatures, but unfortunately, very smoky and hazy and dirty air conditions are expected to be prevalent starting to go downhill on Saturday. A couple programming reminders. It is uh, homecoming. For Eastmont High School tonight, and we will be there live with our cameras. So we'll take to the air at uh, 6.30. The game starts at 7 o'clock. It's the Eastmont Wildcats and the Sunnyside Grizzlies. Eric Grandstrom and Paul Collard with the call. And because it is homecoming, they'll have an extended halftime. Halftime at a high school football game, usually 20 minutes. It'll be closer to half an hour for halftime because you're going to have festivities. The band will be performing. Uh, the cheerleaders and the drill team will be performing. And they will be crowning the Royal Court. So we'll have all of that for you during halftime. Don't miss that. And then tomorrow, we'll be at Lee Boffle Field at the Apple Bowl for Wenatchee Panthers soccer. They'll take on Moses Lake, the Moses Lake Mavericks. Uh, Sebastian Moraga with the call there. We'll have that for you at uh, 1 o'clock, I believe, tomorrow afternoon from Lee Boffle Field at the Apple Bowl. Don't forget the Washington Huskies play tonight, not tomorrow. They have a night game taking on UCLA in the Rose Bowl. They'll kick off at 7.30. You can watch that on ESPN. Cougars are home against Cal at 2 o'clock. And uh, basically, if you want to get out and enjoy this beautiful weather, you want to do it in the morning when the relative humidity is at its highest because the air quality will deteriorate 
as the day progresses. That's it for us. Have a great weekend. We will see you Monday. Take care. Bye-bye.